Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. Yet again, I know I sound like a broken record. I have already recorded this episode. Something in the universe keeps happening where I record an episode and then it says, no. This time, I recorded the whole thing. Now I'm checking the microphone to make sure it's on and working because I recorded the whole episode and then two minutes in, the microphone died and I didn't know. And then I rewatched and I was like, shoot. I'm muted because I didn't have the microphone. Oh, hopefully it works this time. I honestly think it's for the best. It sounds annoying, but I think the first time I do things is kind of a rough draft. Like my ideas aren't fully settled because when I do these episodes, I don't plan really what I'm going to say. I kind of want it to be off the cuff and natural and what I'm feeling in the moment. So I don't really plan it out. And so I think the first go is kind of a little bit rough, just like any rough draft, and it gets better and more refined the more I have to repeat it. So that's what I'm telling myself. Hopefully I say it even better this time around. Alas, we move on. I wanted to talk this week about putting your oxygen mask on first. You know how when you're on an airplane and they do the whole spiel in the beginning and they tell you to put on your oxygen mask before helping those next to you. At first listen, at first, the first time you hear that phrase or that metaphor, you could think that it comes off as selfish, like save yourself, don't care about the people around you. But what I take it to actually mean is that you have to help yourself and care for yourself before you can show up for others. Because if you don't, You're not going to show up as your best self for those around you if you don't take care of yourself first. I have had a really hard time my whole life being a people pleaser and saying no to people and setting boundaries. And as a result, I spread myself too thin and I cause myself a lot of internal turmoil and anxiety because I can't say no to things. And then As a result, I get so mad at myself and I'm like, why am I forcing myself to do all these things just because I hate disappointing people? That is honestly my number one fear is disappointing people around me. And it's not even just my friends and family. It goes so far as random strangers. Like if someone, this actually just happened yesterday, some guy started screaming at me. He was sitting at a bar and I was on a walk by the beach. And he started screaming at me and I looked at him and took off my headphones and then realized that he was saying weird stuff. And so I kept walking and he kept screaming at me and I felt so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, should I have said something? Should I have been nicer? And it's like, no, if people are being weird or mean to you, you don't owe them anything, especially a stranger. Like you need to protect yourself and care for yourself before worrying about anyone else's opinion. And I have a really hard time with that. And the past few weeks have been working on trying to become better at it. And it's gotten especially bad in the case of my diagnosis because a lot of the times I am too tired or I am too sick or any plethora of reasons having to do with my diagnosis. But I forget that that is a valid reason. I mean, any any reason, if it means something to you, is valid. But I always forget that I have, you know, this diagnosis and I have cancer. And so when I say no to something, I feel so bad that I feel too tired to do something. And it's like, no, you shouldn't feel bad. Like you're going through a lot. We all are in different ways. And so if you have to take time for yourself to take care of yourself, that is what you have to do. Okay. And that's totally okay. No matter the reason, whatever feels right to you is valid. Because it's your life and you have control over it. You're the only one that does. And so you doing what's right for you. This is not the same as being selfish, right? I'm not saying don't care about the people's feelings around you. Don't take into consideration other people's thoughts and feelings because that is very important. But if you are a people pleaser and you've struggled with setting boundaries and saying no to things, this is your reminder and this is your me telling you that it is okay to put yourself first and it is necessary to put yourself first before you can show up for other people. Because if you spread yourself too thin, if you say yes to every single thing that is offered to you, 
you will spread yourself too thin and not be able to show up as your best self for any of those opportunities. It's like when you're on a Zoom meeting or you're taking a Zoom class and you have multiple different tabs open and you're trying to text people back and you're focusing on too many things at once and therefore you're not diverting your attention to any one thing because our brains can only focus really on one thing at a time, completely and totally on one thing. You might think that you can multitask, but you really can't, not adequately at least, to, to, enough to do a task the way that you would want to if you were doing it just focusing on that one task. And so when you do too many things at once, when you try to take advantage of every opportunity at once, you don't divert enough attention to any of those things and you don't show up as your best self for the people that are around you. So really, it is a good thing to only say yes to the opportunities that you really want to and that you know will not harm you in any way because then you can d dedicate the right amount of energy to each of those things and you can show up for the people around you that you love in ways that is more meaningful and more substantial. And this oftentimes means saying no to things that maybe aren't aligning with you in the moment. And I've had a really hard time with that because we all get a gut instinct about something, right? Like sometimes I'll get invited to do something or I'll invited to I'll get invited to go out, let's say one night. And I know that I really don't want to go out, but I'm like, oh, I really should see my friends. Like I really, I really should just suck it up really is the thing. I tell myself all the time to suck it up and to just do something. And yes, sometimes we have to force ourselves to do hard things to become better, but not when it comes down to silly things that would not benefit our mental well-being. Like if you think that you have to go out to satisfy the needs of your friends or to let people know that you are a fun person or something something superficial that is not meaningful enough to to instigate you forcing yourself to do something that you do not want to do so when you get a gut feeling about an opportunity you have to listen to it because our internal compasses are very strong and if you don't trust yourself if you don't listen to your compass, if you ignore it and force yourself to do things, you're telling yourself that you do not trust yourself. You're telling yourself that your gut instincts are not right. And that creates a whole slew of other problems because if you can't trust yourself, how can you love yourself? How can you take care of yourself? How are you supposed to extend trust to others or expect others to trust you when you do not trust yourself first? So you have to listen to your gut instinct and what it is telling you to do in certain situations and keep the promises that you make to yourself because that is most important. If you tell yourself, I really don't want to go to this function this weekend, stick to that decision. And, and if you change your mind at the last minute, that's totally fine. Then go. But don't flip-flop constantly back and forth the entire week because that creates, and I know firsthand, that creates so much stress and anxiety that is unnecessary because you're constantly thinking about, should I do this? Should I not? What are the pros? What are the cons? No, eliminate that. Just make the decision, trust yourself, and stick with it. And again, if you change your mind last minute, great, then go. Do the thing that you want to do in that moment. But don't stress about it all week and agonize over how other people are going to react if you don't go to something or if you change your mind because ultimately nobody else is caring about the situation as much as you are. And that's something that I have really had to remind myself as I've been working on this is that the right people for you will want you to do what's best for your well-being. If you don't want to go to an event, if you are too tired to do something, if you know that you would be worse off by saying yes to a commitment, your friends will acknowledge that and they will respect that and they will love you regardless, as you would for them. And if they wouldn't, if you really, really think that they would have a negative reaction to you changing your mind or not wanting to do something, that just shows you that they are not the right people to be in your life. I had a conversation about this with a friend recently and he reminded me of this. 
And I thought it was very powerful and something that I've been trying to constantly remind myself of. The right people will never be mad at you for changing your mind or prioritizing yourself. They will get that. The wrong people won't, and that just shows you that they are not the right people to be in your life. Point blank, period. Simple as that. Something I've especially struggled with in this regard is with answering things right away. So I think that comes with being a people pleaser, but like if someone texts me, if someone Slack messages me for work, any way someone tries to communicate with me, I have to answer it as soon as I see it or else I feel so bad about myself and about the situation. And it causes me so much anxiety because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to answer this text right now, even if it's something that I really would rather consider or wait to reply on. And I know what helps a lot of people with this is putting their phone on do not disturb so that you're not constantly inundated with a bunch of notifications and feeling the need to respond. For me, sometimes do not disturb does not help because I feel the need to check my phone more because I'm like, oh no, what if it's an urgent message that I'm missing versus if I don't have it on, I can just glance at my screen, see if there's anything urgent and then choose to respond or not. What has helped me is I heard this on a podcast recently, and this is this is specifically pertaining to a work environment, but I think you can also apply it to any sort of social environment, but I heard this anecdote on a podcast that back in the day, people used to fax. They didn't have these quick, instant message ways to message one another. And most of the time, by the time the fax came through, even if it was labeled as an urgent fax, by the time it came through and by the time a response was sent back, the issue had been resolved. And that helped me because I always think that the world's going to end if I don't resolve an issue right away, if I don't answer right away. But that is not the case. People will figure it out. You are not the only solver of problems in your life. Other people have the capacity to solve things and to, even if they can't solve it without your help, to wait for you to be able to help them. Things are not as urgent as they seem. I think it's hard to recognize that in our society, which is so go, go, go now and where we are constantly getting so many notifications all the time and the world seems to be moving so fast. But just because the world is moving fast around you does not mean that you have to keep up with that pace. It is very helpful to remind yourself to slow down and recognize that the world has always been spinning at the same speed. It's just these things that we've invented that have caused it to seem faster, but we can make the active effort to take the time to slow down and to think about our thoughts and what we say before we say or do them. This is also really helpful because I think a lot of times we are very reactionary in our responses. I can say that for myself. I have a very emotional reaction to things sometimes, and that can oftentimes result in me saying things that I don't necessarily mean or that don't come out the right way just because it's my gut reaction, but it's not what I would say if I was in a normal, non-emotionally reactive state. So I've really had to read my text messages and think about what I'm going to say before I just end it off. Because once you send something, you can't really unsend it. Like There's a feature on iPhone, I don't know, that sometimes works, but people are going to see it regardless. You really have to think about how that lasting impact will affect people before you say the words that you do. So taking the time to slow down, to not necessarily respond right away, and to recognize that the world will keep spinning you can take a minute to think about your reaction before responding to someone and it will ultimately be beneficial for everyone involved is very helpful to me at least. Ultimately, coming back to the whole premise of this episode, put your own mask on first because if you do not take care of yourself and prioritize yourself, you cannot show up for the people around you in the way that you want to and that you intend to. And if this means saying no to certain opportunities, if this means not answering people right away, if this means 
being quote unquote selfish and taking your concerns and your well being before those around you, then that's what it means. And that's not being selfish. That's you caring about yourself enough to know that you cannot show up for anyone else if you do not show up for yourself. So just remember that because ultimately you are the only one who can take care of you. You are the only one who has agency over your life and it is up to you to make these decisions that best suit you and that best suit your happiness. So I don't want to ramble on for too long. So I think I've said what I wanted to say. I'll cut it off there. But just a reminder that you are worth everything. You're deserving of everything in life, of happiness, and of every opportunity that comes your way. But that doesn't mean that you have to accept every opportunity that comes your way because there will always be more of them. And you saying no once or twice doesn't mean that you're never going to get that same opportunity again. So love yourself enough to recognize that. And I will see you guys, talk to you guys, I guess, next time. Thank you. Bye.